This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by HipChat. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out Wireshark and how to tell if a site is down for you or for everyone. Now, obviously, a really simple and easy way to do this is just to visit downforeveryone.com or whatever that site is called and just find out. But if you want to really get geeky, here's how to tell if a website is down via Wireshark. Now, this is a pretty common problem, and sometimes the issue can be within your network or sometimes it can be outside of the network if the website is actually down. If several people are having the same issue, it's either because the website is down or your network is actually messed up if all those people are in your network. Now, in my case, I want to visit threatwire.com, which I know is currently down. Each time I tried to do this, I'm sent back an error on my browser that says, the website you're trying to visit is currently unavailable, blah, blah, blah. And we, we can know how irritating that can get. Now, if I try to find it in Wireshark, it's kind of tough to tell. So what I did was open my control, my command prompt, prompt and I pinged threatwire.com. It automatically tells me what IP address it re resolves to, and then it tries to send several ping requests. Now, if I do this, and I have done this before with Wireshark on my tutorials and hack tip, if I do this while I have Wireshark up, I'm gonna receive these four ICMP protocol requests. So they say echo ping request. It's very, very obvious to tell. Once we get those four requests, we can then try searching for it in the browser. If I do that, I get a bunch of synchronized packets, but no answers to these. You'll notice up here, I also have all these TCP protocol packets. Now those happen whenever you search for it in the browser and you end up getting that error code. I would get a bunch of synchronized packets, but no answer. So it keeps on trying to retransmit up to three different times. Now, you see a whole bunch of transmits down here as well. So we have the TCP protocol packet, port 80, synchronize, but when it can't synchronize, it tries this TCP retransmission. And this is also TCP protocol, and it tries the same exact thing. You'll notice that these two, I believe it's these two, match up with this one. And then below that, we have a second one that matches up with the second two TCP retransmissions. The third one matches up with these because it's going to try three times and after that, it's going to basically come out with an error. If you take a closer look at the info dialog, the ping requests all say no response found. So that's kind of interesting. If we look all the way up here, all four of them say no response found. Very, very easy way to tell if there's an error going on while you're trying to visit a website. While the TCP packets just say retransmission. Now, if we look at other packets in this, in this capture for other sites within my network, we can prove that the problem only occurs when trying to visit this one site, not the entire network. So we know that it's an issue with this website, not everything else. Now, after the break, I'll detail a few other problems that you might face whenever dealing with uh, issues trying to reconnect to the internets and whatnot and what to look for in Wireshark. How is your team communicating? Are they using a variety of email, IM, texting, cloud storage, and document sharing apps? HipChat puts everything in one place and is designed specifically for businesses. This solution called HipChat is IM, video chat, document sharing, screen sharing, system updates, code sharing, integrated into one simple platform. Email's too slow, meetings get sidetracked, and regular IMs just don't work well for groups. HipChat keeps your team in sync and it works on any device no matter where you are. And the best part? HipChat Chat is integrated with the top developer tools like GitHub, which is my favorite, Jira, Zendesk, and more. In fact, there are 57 services that HipChat will basically play nice with. HipChat brings your entire project and your team communications together. They're also easy to set up, fun to use, and it makes your team wildly productive. I've been using HipChat here in our offices to send Darren little code snippets for my stuff over on Hack5. All that Arduino code, super simple to just send over to Darren via my GitHub account. Now, there is a freemium version, which you can 
can use for free forever, but for the next 30 days, you'll get the full version of HipChat for free, which includes the bonus features of video and screen sharing. You can try HipChat for free, no credit card required. Visit hipchat.com slash hack tip, sign up, click on start chatting, and then invite a few team members and try it for free for 30 days. Remember that's hipchat.com slash hack tip. And for the first 100 signups, HipChat is going to extend their 30 day free trial offer to 90 days. HipChat, your team, your project in sync instantly. We are back with more disconnection failures and sad times in Wireshark. Okay, they're not too sad if you can solve the problem. Now we know how to see if a site is down in Wireshark, but what else can we figure out? Because there's a lot that we can probably figure out. I've run into a problem where I couldn't access the internet, but all of my coworkers could, for example. This is a great one. So we used a single router and the IP addresses all came from DHCP. This actually happened at the Hack5 warehouse. Now by using Wireshark, I was able to determine that the problem was with DNS. I was able to reach my router and my computer had no problem connecting to it, but couldn't figure out the DNS request. Everyone else could log onto the internet, so I knew it must have been a problem with my computer itself. We were able to find the problem was because I had to manually set my default gateway address instead of letting it be DHCP assigned. So I switched it back and then ta-da, it worked and I could totally hit Google and get on my Facebook. Now, what if you can access the net, but you keep getting a can't display web page? We hate those errors. Uh, that shows up on your browser. If you are in a really small network, such as here in the Hack Wire Warehouse or wherever you might be, and you pull up Wireshark, this would sh show you sending the site a TCP packet, but you would end up getting an RST error or reset packet error back to you. Now that packet terminates the communication and after a few seconds, the browser gives you an error. If you are able to send a TCP packet through your router to the net, but you have trouble sending a DNS query, it could be because the host file for your device already has the DNS mapped to that IP or because it's mapped in the DNS cache. So what you would do at this point is check your computer's host file for the easiest solution, which would be the easiest solution, and then just remove the DNS mapping if it ends up being there and it's incorrect. By checking Wireshark for these kind of issues and understanding the packets, you can then fix all sorts of problems faster for your network and for your coworkers or for even just your friends and family. There are a ton of other problems that can occur when trying to establish a connection to the outside world. So read up on some of the examples online and on the Wireshark website, because there's tons of them. They're really, really good examples. Of course, let me know what you think as well. You can send a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show Hack5 for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Woo! One takes snubs. <laughs>